poppin' dogs? Mr. Allen here. We're about to graph and write an equation for a rational function with these asymptotes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plot those on the graph. All right, next up, I'm gonna put my graph in the particular spots where I'm thinking it wants to be. Now, this is just a particular graph. It doesn't have to be the exact one. So a potential one would be something like this guy right here. Then we'd have something maybe down here, and you're going to start to notice some of these similar patterns as you study your rational functions. And then I'll throw another one over here. Now, there are times where things can hit, you know, go both down at the, on the same asymptote and stuff like that. But for right now, pretty common rational function with two asymptotes here, where you get two parts out here, one guy in the middle down there. It would be flipped if you had negative. So we're not going to do that. All right. So in my numerator, I'm just going to go ahead and throw a one. All right. And then down in my denominator, that's where I'm going to pop those vertical asymptotes because that's where they come from in my equation. So I'm going to have x and I got to think the opposite here plus 3 because when I plug in negative 3 for that x, that makes this factor 0 and anything times 0 is 0 and now I have 0 in my denominator. It's undefined. That's where we get our asymptotes from. And then we've got ourselves x minus 2 so that when I plug in 2, same thing occurred. 0 in the denominator, no bueno. That's why we have the vertical asymptotes. The graph does not exist there. Now, the last thing we got to do is take into account this horizontal asymptote. There's different ways to do that. All right? One of them is just with basic transformations. We're going to throw that negative one on the outside of my function. And now that moves the original parent function down one. So usually you'd have a horizontal asymptote here at y equals zero. That's going to shift it down one. And now we have it at negative one. All right. Dope. You can also do that with adding different parts into your numerator here. Uh, but we're going to go this route on this one. And maybe in another video, I'll change it up because I'm crazy like that. All right. There we go. We got a, an equation. We have a graph. It matches all that stuff right there. I left it unscaled on this graph here other than mentioning where those asymptotes were because I don't want to specify where the zeros are, um, where my y-intercept is. I just know that it's going to be below there. All right. So that's why there's no scaling on that. Let's do this bad boy over here, all right? Let's do it, let's do it. All right, so different wording here though, different wording. I have, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x is approaching three. And as x approaches positive infinity, f of x is approaching three. What the heck does that mean? Well, come back to this graph real quick. As x approaches negative infinity, this guy right here is approaching negative one. And as I go to positive infinity, this guy right here is going to negative one. So that right there, this part right here gives me my horizontal asymptote, okay? It's just in that notation there. But from my horizontal asymptote, I can get my end behavior. From my end behavior, I can get my horizontal asymptote. So this tells me I've got one at positive 3. We'll pop this guy right up here. I'm going to throw a 3 right there. We're in business right now. We're in business. All right, next up. As x approaches negative, or sorry, 1 from the left, f of x is approaching infinity. And as x approaches 1 from the right, f of x is approaching positive infinity. Interesting. So that right there would be my vertical asymptote. Let me show you over on this one. As x approaches, say, 2 from the right side, I'm going to positive infinity. As x approaches 2 from the left side, I'm going to negative infinity. So that kind of notation there is talking about our vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to throw a vertical asymptote at positive 1. Beautiful. Now, since it's approaching positive infinity on both sides, it's going to be going up like this. I don't have a ton of room here, but we go like that. And this guy right here, we cool. So they're both going up towards that vertical asymptote, getting closer and closer and closer, but they never touch that vertical asymptote. They'll never meet each other. How sad, right? There's just that fence right there. They can't say what up. All right. Well, maybe they can say what up. They just can't, you know, ever really meet. Okay. So anywho, beyond that, let's go, let's go past that. So there's my graph. Now I need to write my function, right? Well, let's see here. I'm going to still throw just a, a one up in my numerator there, right? Keep it basic. Keep it basic. Now my, my vertical asymptote is at positive one side. So I have x minus one right here. And then, uh, but it's going up on both sides. Here's what you got to do. We got to square this bad boy right here. We got to square that bad boy. And now it's going to go up to the same spot on both sides, all right? Cool, that's pretty dope, that's pretty dope. You're gonna start noticing that as you graph these things, then as you're asked to do these types of things, you might just start kind of remember that when it approaches the asymptote on the same side, or sorry, it approaches the asymptote the same way on each side, that factor is going to be squared from where you get your asymptote. All right, last thing here, this is gonna shift up three, so I'll do the same thing I did before, we'll do plus three. 
Dang, man. That's dope. Two dope examples. Two functions. Two graphs. Double the fun. Double the math. All right. I'll see you guys later.